come to Chiang Rai, you're gonna hear about two things, heaven and hell. And we just arrived at what is known as Hell, also known as the Black Temple. Now, even though it's called Black Temple because of its Wat-like appearance, it's actually not a temple, it's a house. Ban meaning house, Dam meaning black. So we're gonna go in and check it out, show you a little bit around. One thing I can tell you is it looks a lot cooler in person than it does in pictures. Tickets to the Black Temple are 80 baht per person. So the Black House isn't just one house. The complex is comprised of about 40 buildings, tall, small, all shapes and sizes, spread out over a garden. Now just walking in the main building itself, the largest building, you can see a lot of dark art, animal corpses. Everything from snake skins, alligator skins, all different types of skulls, horns. It almost looks like a game room in a hunt club mixed with like African tribal art. Apparently it's the artist's take on Buddhist philosophy, which has caused a little bit of controversy over the few years. It kind of leaves your mind in a huge playground and sets the stage for the rest of the experience, which we'll show you now. here are massive. It's actually more than just the black house itself. There's other spots in the back where you can go into. Some of the buildings you can go into, some of them you can't. So it's different. about two hours at the Black Temple. If not more. Yeah. And it's really impressive. The grounds are really large and a lot of the details are very intricate. So it can take a while to kind of browse through the whole thing. Now we're headed to heaven, also known as the White Temple. Leaving the Black House and going to the White Temple, it's inevitable you're gonna pass through downtown Chiang Rai. Now this area is known for a bunch of great restaurants, markets, and coffee shops that don't disappoint. And I'm serious, I mean, we're in the north of Thailand. This is where some of the best beans in the country come from. The coffee here will not disappoint. Oh, and of course, the infamous clock tower. Which also happens to be designed by the same guy who created the White Temple. the big hoorah of Chiang Rai. The main attraction is the White Temple, also known as Heaven. Each ticket costs 50 baht, and you'll notice the moment you walk here, the entire temple is white, but you'll also start to notice there's a little bit of uh, satanic type structures around the temple. So the fact that it's called Heaven, So a brief little history on this place. This Wat was already here, but by the end of the 20th century, it was falling apart. So a local artist from Chiang Rai by the name of Charlem Kai Kosi Papat, not really sure how I did on that, but let me know in the comments, took on the project himself. And apparently up to date, he spent about 40 million baht of his own money, which is equivalent of about $1.2 million. And what I think is so dope about him is that he takes donations, but nothing to exceed 10,000 baht because he doesn't want to be influenced by big donors. Now the Wat is all white and that's supposed to represent Buddha's purity and the little mirror mosaics all around are supposed to represent Buddha's wisdom. But it doesn't just stop with religious artwork. There's pop culture spread all around here. So we're gonna go on the inside of the temple and check it out. Now you can bring cameras in there but you can't film. 
If you want to see what it looks like, just Google him and search it. Other than that, we're going to show you around the grounds a little bit and then we're going to get out of here. That's what's been coined the main attraction here in Chiang Rai. If you happen to be in the area, you should swing by and check it out. Personal tip though, I would probably pass on paying the 50 baht because you can get really close to the temple and grounds without actually going in. But Chiang Rai is more than just coffee shops, markets, and temples. The area is actually full of natural landscapes, with Puchi Pha being our favorite in all of Northern Thailand, or arguably Thailand as a whole. So it's a really hot day today and we're gonna take advantage of some of those natural resources by heading to one of the tallest waterfalls in all of Northern Thailand. A short ride from the White Temple is the national park called Nam Lak Kok. That's where the waterfall is that we're going to. When you get here, there's a parking lot Parking's free, park your bike or car, and then head straight to the trail. It's about a 1400 meter hike to get to the waterfall. You can do the hike in tennis shoes or water shoes. Wouldn't recommend doing it in flip flops, although you really could if you wanted to. There's like gnats all over the screen. <laughs> that's one thing you have to battle when you're in here, and that's why we're wearing sunglasses. Even though it's shaded, it's because there's about a billion bugs all around us. You can see them on the screen. Anyway, the walk, it's not too terrible. Gradual inclines, declines, walk over rivers. It's about a 20 minute walk, 25 minute walk, something like that. So the waterfall itself is called Kung Korn. It's 70 meters tall and we can't wait to see it. It's worth coming up here. Very epic waterfall. Totally worth the height to come up. But the real question is, how can we get in? The water wasn't that powerful or that strong or overwhelming when you're actually in it. And the coolest part about this waterfall for me was that unlike a lot of waterfalls, when you get in, you actually have to swim up to them because the impact of the water has created such like a crater. This one had a layer of sand that was only about maybe a foot, maybe two feet deep. You could walk right up to the waterfall and get in. It's a beautiful scenery even if you don't get in. So. If you do make the journey out here, expect to spend at least an hour just feeling out the waterfall and spending time there. But it's a little bit later in the day, so we're gonna head back to downtown Chiang Rai and head to the night bazaar. Corn, or all the little gnats, the little bugs that get in your face, they're annoying as shit. So the best way to avoid them is to run through the forest. to the same type of market that you might find in Chiang Mai. Lots of handicrafts, different types of shirts, jewelry, clothing, souvenirs, everything you can possibly imagine is here. 
I will say though, there is also the Saturday night market, which has a lot of the same things, but I actually personally think that the night bazaar has a little bit more to offer. This night bazaar is a lot more massive than I thought it was. There's actually two stages set up where people are singing and a whole courtyard dedicated to food. It blows the Saturday and the Sunday night market straight out of the water in terms of food. And the good news too is that this happens every single night. So when you come to Chiang Rai, there's really no excuse to miss it. does have a big dancing floor where everyone does this very traditional Thai dance. So it's a little bit more rowdy and it's definitely something to check out. for a little bit and then after that we're gonna go to the center of town to check out the infamous clock tower light show Dark, but with an artistic twist, I guess. 